Could South Carolina's football team be this year's version of the 2021 Arkansas Razorbacks? Our Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back to the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, your show for daily headlines and potential storylines of your favorite South Carolina Gamecock sports teams. I am your host, as always, Andrew Lyon, and I'm going to dive into a subject and an idea that I have had for this show for a little while now, and I felt like that now would be a really good time to discuss it. Today, we're going to talk about how South Carolina could potentially be this year's version of the 2021 Arkansas Razorbacks in terms of exceeding expectations and potentially changing the perception of their football program in the process. I'm going to do this today by providing some context into Arkansas's jump that they took in 2021 at the top of the show. In the middle portion of today's show, I'm going to then carry over some of those same stat markers I use for the first segment to South Carolina's 2021 football season and discuss some of the similarities between both situations. And then at the end of today's show, I will address if the Gamecocks could indeed pull off this jump mimicking Arkansas's 2021 season and why that could be the case. And I'm going to be going over a lot of statistics in today's show. So I'm going to tell you from the jump, you're going to want to follow along today or else you are probably going to get lost with all the different stats I bring up. But before I do so, as always, thank you for making the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your daily choice for South Carolina Gamecock sports coverage. All right, so let's start off with recapping what Arkansas did from the 2020 football season going into 2021. In 2020, Arkansas's final record was 3-7. and seven. Obviously, not very good by any standards in college football, but of course, this was the COVID-19 shortened pandemic season. Arkansas lost three games in 2020 by 25-plus points. Those three games being Georgia, Florida, and Alabama. They also lost three games by one score, which is eight points in college football or less. And those three opponents were Auburn, LSU, and Missouri. They did not win any of the three games they won in 2020 by more than 12 points. Very similar to what South Carolina did in 2021, which of course I'll get to later on. Now, of course, while COVID had a lot of rare external circumstances that it pushed onto college football in 2020, meaning therefore not every FBS team played 10 games, skewing a lot of the averages for some of these statistics, I still believe in general that some of these statistics are very important to consider for this topic and discussion. So, when looking at Arkansas's 2020 scoring offense, the Razorbacks averaged 25.7 points per game, which ranked 8th in the SEC and 87th in the FBS. So overall, looking at a below average scoring offense in terms of comparison with the rest of the country at the Division I FBS level. And then on scoring defense, the Razorbacks gave up on average 34.9 points per game. This ranked 10th in the SEC out of 14 teams and 97th in the FBS, which is really dangerously close to the bottom of the barrel that you can hit in terms of the rest of college football. Now, when looking at the Razorbacks going into the 2021 football season, the Razorbacks returned 78% of their production from 2020, according to Bill Connolly of ESPN. This ranked 4th in the SEC and 39th in the FBS. A side note, by the way, Ole Miss returned 81% of its 2020 production and 
went from five and five to ten and three in 2021. And some of the major news publications weren't really high on the Arkansas Razorbacks, including Phil Steele, who comes out with a big preview magazine every single summer before college football season kicks off. And in 2021, Phil Steele, while he wasn't the only one to predict this, he was the one that I could really find with the time that I had for today's show. He predicted the Razorbacks to finish dead last in the SEC West, pretty much meaning that he probably did not expect the Razorbacks to win six games or more and make a bowl game. And, of course, the Razorbacks would turn around and would shock many in the college football world by going 9-4 and four on the season, 4-4 four and four in conference play, and even would win the Outback Bowl over Penn State at the end of their season. Now, some of the key things to pick up from this big jump they had in 2021. Arkansas flipped three of their 2020 losses into wins in the 2021 football season. Wins against LSU, which was on the road, Missouri at home to finish off the regular season, and of course against the Texas A&M Aggies in Jerry World, which sort of really caught the nation's attention. Arkansas also only lost one game by 25 plus points, which was at Georgia earlier in the season, which means that compared to 2020, Arkansas was way more competitive across the board. Their scoring offense and defense also saw really decent jumps in a positive direction, as Arkansas averaged 30.9 points per game, which was 6th in the SEC and 48th in the FBS, and compared to 2020 was a 5.2 point per game increase on average. And then for scoring defense, the Razorbacks only gave up 22.9 points per game on average, which was 6th in the SEC, like it was in scoring offense, and 39th in the FBS. And this was a 12-point decrease on average compared to the 2020 mark that they set. So, as you could tell, Arkansas really improved in multiple different areas when just looking at the big picture from 2020 to 2021. Now, in just a few moments, I'm going to use some of these same statistics to talk about South Carolina's 2021 season and look at some of the similarities between South Carolina and Arkansas, statistically speaking, and then talk about some of their program similarities or some of the similarities between both situations. But before I do so, I have a quick word from our friends over at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports information where you'll find all the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's Stanley Cup Finals between the Colorado Avalanche and the Tampa Bay Lightning. You also got regular season Major League Baseball games, where in a division like the National League East, the Mets, Braves, and Phillies are all doing really well as of late, and it could come down to the wire if you want to look at maybe a future bet on who will win the National League East or any other division in Major League Baseball. And of course, you've also got all the latest fighting news from MMA and UFC all the way to boxing. Bet Online acts as a continuous source for all of your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and much, much more. So head on over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online where the game starts. All right, so now let's take a look at some of South Carolina's stats from the 2021 season, starting off with their final record. Now, the Gamecocks went 7-6 in 2021, which included a Dukes-Mayo Bowl victory over the North Carolina Tar Heels. Now, South Carolina lost four games by 25-plus points last season, which was against Georgia, Tennessee, Texas A&M, all on the road, and against our arch rivals Clemson at home to end the regular season. This is only one game off from the mark that Arkansas set in 2020, where they lost three games by 25-plus points. South Carolina also lost two games by one score, eight points or less, 
And those games were against the Kentucky Wildcats at home, where they lost 16 to 10, and at Missouri late in the season, where they lost 31 to 28. Again, only one off of the mark that Arkansas set in 2020, as Arkansas only lost three games by one score or less. And South Carolina only won two FBS games by more than nine points last year. And those two games were against the Florida Gators and the North Carolina Tar Heels of the Dukes Mayo Bowl. Arkansas, again, for comparison, they didn't win any games in their 2020 COVID-shortened season by more than 12 points. So you see a lot of striking similarities between Arkansas in 2020 and South Carolina in 2021 in the sense that they either won their games by the slimmest of margins or they were blown out and run out of the stadium that they were playing at. So you see a lot of similarities just purely from a performance standpoint. Now let's look at the scoring offense and defense for the Gamecocks. Now the Gamecocks scoring offense only averaged 22.6 points per game last year, which ranked 13th in the SEC, 106th in the FBS. This is definitely well below average and one of the worst scoring offenses in college football when looking at last season. But when looking at scoring defense, it's a different story for the Gamecocks, as the Gamecocks only allowed, on average, 24 points per game, which was 7th in the SEC and 46th in the FBS. Now, the similarity with their scoring offense and defense versus Arkansas scoring offense and defense back in 2020 was that just like Arkansas in their first year under Sam Pittman, they were average to below average on one side of the ball, but were really bad on the other side of the ball. The only difference really is that Arkansas was much better on offense at the beginning of Sam Pittman's tenure, while South Carolina was much better on defense at the beginning of Shane Beamer's tenure. Now, we're looking at returning production going into 2022. According to ESPN staff writer Bill Connolly, the Gamecocks are returning 73% of their production from last season, which, as I've mentioned before, it ranks third in the SEC and 36th in the FBS. And when looking at predictions for South Carolina heading into 2022, I could not find anything concrete from any of the major news publications. And while I've ordered my own Phil Steele magazine, I have yet to receive it in the mail as, of course, they're still waiting to be printed. So I went and looked at BetOnline's win total again just to remind myself what the over-under is. And BetOnline's win total over-under future bet for South Carolina 2022 is set right now at 6.5 wins. Basically meaning that most of the odds makers see South Carolina as, as a 6 or 7 win team. And of course, they're allowing you all to decide based on your betting where you think they will end up. So statistically speaking... Those are the similarities between 2020 Arkansas and 2021 South Carolina. Now, I'm going to talk about some of the general similarities between both programs in each of these situations. With the first one being the coaches that they play under, the circumstances they undertook when they were hired, and how they fit their respective programs. So, when Sam Pivot took over for Arkansas in 2020... Arkansas, in the last two years combined, had only won four games in the disastrous Chad Morris tenure, one that Arkansas fans would really like to forget and seemingly have, of course, after last season. But to put it bluntly, the team was just not performing well when Sam Pittman took over. This was a team that was probably extremely demoralized, had quite frankly, forgotten what it felt like to win football games consistently and was struggling against even teams the likes of North Texas. If you remember the fake fair catch punt return for a touchdown, again, lives in the nightmares of Razorback fans. And when Shane Beamer took over South Carolina subsequently last season, the Gamecocks were in a very similar spot as they had only won six games combined in the two years prior to Shane Beamer arriving at South Carolina. Now, the striking similarity between both Shane Beamer at South Carolina and St. Pittman at Arkansas is how both individuals fit their respective programs. Sam Pittman, Sam Pittman has been a career offensive line coach for a lot of the time that he has been in college football. And when he took over the Arkansas job, he talked about how this was his dream job. He had coached at Arkansas before, so he knew the state very well. He's coached in the SEC for many years, so he knows the conference very well. And he came to Arkansas, and Sam Pittman, of course, he comes off as really just 
a good old boy, a, a guy that, you know, is sort of not necessarily laid back, but he doesn't really let outside noise and things that are out of his control bother him a whole lot. And just kind of looks at it as, you know, you just take your lunch pail and you go to work every single day to make the program the best that you can. And he really and truthfully just fits the mold of an Arkansas Razorback head coach. And you see how much Arkansas fans love Sam Pittman now because of what he's done and how he has entailed and sort of fit his personality to the program that he is at. It's the same exact thing that Shane Beamer has done with South Carolina. Shane Beamer has mentioned multiple times that he views South Carolina as a dream job. He doesn't view this place as a stepping stone. He was born and raised in South Carolina. He has coached at South Carolina. He, like Sam Pittman, has coached at multiple SEC schools. And he waited a long time to get his shot and something that he viewed as the right fit for him as a head coach. So both of these guys fit their programs to an absolute T. And it's probably two of the better fits in all of college football in terms of the coach with the program that they're at. Now, another similarity between both Arkansas and South Carolina is that neither are historically considered to be in the upper echelon of their division, which also means that because of this, they're rarely given the benefit of the doubt based on the history and logo, like a few other certain teams in this conference. So now, in the Western Division, of course, you got Alabama and LSU right at the top. Those are the two top-performing teams in that division for the last couple decades. And then after that, it's a little bit of a logjam, but you can make arguments for multiple teams. you got Auburn, who, of course, historically has been a good program, and they've also won a national championship and have made the national title game multiple times in the last decade and a half or so. You've also got Texas A&M right now, who, while they haven't really done a whole lot yet with what they have done on the recruiting trail, how, of course, they're attacking NIL, which, of course, is a completely different rabbit hole that I am not going to dive into on this episode. But what they have done so far has really pushed Texas A&M up from a prestige standpoint and has fans talking about them more. And then that's where Arkansas sort of jumps to the conversation. So Arkansas could be behind as many as four teams in terms of how they are perceived in the SEC West. Then you look at the SEC East for South Carolina standpoint, you got Georgia, Florida, and Tennessee. They're one, two, three, and from a historical standpoint, Georgia and Florida both won national championships, and so has Tennessee. Tennessee, although they have struggled a lot in the last 15 years or so, is still considered to be one of, you know, a part of the old guard in the SEC and still garner a lot of respect based on what they've done in decades past. And Right now in modern times, you got Kentucky, which is sort of like the East version of Texas A&M. Last few years, because of what they've done, they've really kind of vaulted themselves up to that group in the SEC East. So in that division, South Carolina can be viewed at as the fourth or fifth team in the SEC East, just like Arkansas in the West. And then the next similarity and final one that I'm going to discuss between both programs is the fact that they both play difficult schedules every year for one reason or another. Obviously, both teams are in the SEC. The SEC is widely considered to be the toughest conference in college football. So, of course, both of these teams play some really tough opponents within their own conference. With Arkansas, they seem to play a gauntlet every single year, regardless of whether it's an out-of-conference game or it's an SEC game. And I'm not sure why it is that's the case, if it's just really bad luck and bad timing with how Cincinnati and BYU have done. But they play Cincinnati and BYU and Liberty all this year out of conference. And those three teams are considered to be some of the better teams in the group of five or FBS independent division. And they, of course, play all the teams in the SEC West. So they play, of course, Alabama and LSU and Auburn and so on and so forth. With South Carolina, their permanent SEC West opponent is Texas A&M. A really tough draw for them. And they, of course, play in the SEC East, meaning they play those teams like Georgia and Florida and Tennessee and Kentucky and everybody else. Plus, they have Clemson as their arch rival every single year just to top everything off. So both of these teams, for varying different reasons, always are playing a somewhat tough schedule every single year. 
Now, when looking at Arkansas's 2021 opponents and their collective record from the 2020 season, their opponent's collective record from that year was 76 and 42, which was good for a winning percentage of 64.4%. Compared to South Carolina's 2022 opponents and their collective record from the 2021 season, that record stands at 92 and 62, which is good for a 59.7% winning percentage. And I bring up those two numbers right there because the one argument that Arkansas had against them in 2021 that South Carolina fans are now having to hear every day in 2022 is. But the schedule's too tough. Y'all just play too many tough opponents. There's just no way that you could win five, six, or any more games than that. And both teams had to hear that each of those seasons. So my idea with this stat right here that I just mentioned is just to point out, again, how similar both situations are in terms of the narrative that's been sort of painted across the program and what they did in the previous year. Okay, so now I'm at the final segment of today's show, which means that it's now time for me to answer the question, can South Carolina replicate what the Arkansas Razorbacks did in the 2021 football season? The short answer from me is it is very much within the realm of possibility. I think there's a very good chance that South Carolina could wind up doing what Arkansas did in 2021 this coming football season. So now it's time to play a game of hypotheticals. Let's just imagine that South Carolina does one of either two things that Arkansas did in 2021, which either one would be considered really, really good for South Carolina in either case. The first factor being they flip three losses from 2021 into wins in 2022, or South Carolina wins eight games in the regular season like Arkansas did the year prior. So let's start off with a scenario of them trying to flip three losses from last season into wins this season. Now, South Carolina suffered blowout losses in 2021 from Georgia, Texas A&M, Tennessee, and Clemson, like I mentioned earlier in the episode. There's one big factor with the majority of these games that is in the Gamecocks' favor that wasn't in their favor this past season. And that's the fact that three of those four games are in Columbia this season. They'll be playing Georgia in Columbia in week three. They'll be playing A&M in week seven coming off of a bye week. They'll be playing Tennessee in week 12, the week prior to taking on their arch rival, the Clemson Tigers, on the road in week 13. So those are some of the blowout losses to consider. You've also got the close losses from 2021, which again, eight points or less. They suffered against... Kentucky and Missouri. They play Kentucky this year on the road in week six, and they play Missouri at home in week nine. Now, I look at, if I'm if I'm sitting here right now, and I'm looking to try to flip three of these losses into wins. I'll start off, of course, with the close losses. Missouri is widely considered by Gamecock fans to be a game they should not have dropped last year, and same deal with the Kentucky game. Kentucky had a minus three turnover margin in Columbia that night. And quite frankly, the reason South Carolina lost that game was just flat out because they could not really get into the Kentucky red zone at any point during the ball game. They weren't able to convert on some pivotal third and fourth and shorts, which should be a credit to Kentucky's defense at the same time. But also, South Carolina dealt with a revolving door at the quarterback position this past season, and it took pretty much three quarters of the regular season for them to get the running game going. The offense was still going through a lot of struggles at that point in the season. And I think that that really gave Kentucky a lot of benefit in that ball game. And then you got the Missouri game. Missouri just basically decided to give the ball to Tyler Beatty the entire ball game and say, here, we're going to let you just run the ball. We don't think they can stop you. And we're going to just pretty much bank on the fact you'll help us win the game. And that's exactly what happened. If I had to pick three games that South Carolina could win, I think they can flip the Kentucky game. I think they can flip the Missouri game. And I could see South Carolina flipping one of Georgia, Texas A&M, or Tennessee this next season. I don't think it's really that far-fetched. You really think South Carolina is going to go over 
in every single one of those games. You mean to tell me Kentucky, who we don't know the stats, Chris Rodriguez, they lost Wondell Robinson, they lost three of their starting offensive linemen, their secondary is extremely suspect going into next season, and compare that with all the improvements South Carolina's made on the roster, you think Kentucky's going to beat South Carolina again? You think it's a guarantee? And then you look at Missouri. Who's going to be their quarterback this next season? Who's going to be their offense without Tyler Beatty? Is their defense going to take a step forward, which they desperately need to this next season if they want to get back to a bowl game and win six-plus games? I don't know if that's going to happen. So, and then, of course, you got the home field advantage in most of these games. I could definitely see South Carolina flipping three of those losses from last season into wins. Now, let's look at South Carolina wants to win eight games this next year. I'll start off with games that you would chalk up as wins. You got Georgia State, Charlotte, South Carolina State, Vanderbilt. I think probably 99% of reasonable college football fans are going to say South Carolina's going to win each of those games. Yes, I know Georgia State beat Tennessee week one like two, three years ago. I understand that. I'm not trying to overlook them. I'm just saying, more than likely, South Carolina will win that game at the end of the day. At least I hope so, or else this is going to look really bad when looking back in September. But those are our chalk-up wins, in my opinion. Now, I personally see these four other games on the schedule as the easiest path to eight wins, needing just four more wins to reach eight regular season wins. One of either Georgia, Texas A&M, or Tennessee at home, like I mentioned earlier, at Kentucky, against Missouri, and then that fourth and final game to add on to that would be at Florida. I've heard a lot of talk about Florida now all of a sudden being a team that could win seven or eight games this next season, and while, don't get me wrong, I understand that Florida still has a lot of talent on their team this year, but I think it's a little bit preposterous that with a new coaching staff and Quite frankly, that offense being potentially just Anthony Richardson and a who's who of other players, we don't know what we're going to see from that Florida defense that at times just looked awful the last two years, that this is a team that's just going to walk out there and win seven, eight games. And a lot of people are saying that they think Florida's going to beat South Carolina. I remind you, South Carolina won this game 40-17 to last year. And I don't care what people want to say about how well the team had quit on Dan Mullen. Well, there was an illness that overcame certain parts of the roster. I'm willing to understand. I understand the second part of what I just mentioned. But all of that is just an effort to make an excuse for why the Gators got absolutely shellacked in Columbia this past season, in my opinion. So looking at all the four games that I just mentioned, I think that that is South Carolina's best and easiest path to eight wins. And again, I think that it is completely and totally feasible So, overall, could South Carolina replicate what Arkansas did in 2021 this coming season? I think absolutely. You look at the schedule, I don't think it's anywhere near as tough as people have made it out to be. As I mentioned before, I think it's actually a little bit less daunting this season when you look at that compared to last year. South Carolina's improvements they've been on the roster on offense. They have got a lot more playmakers and a much better quarterback. They actually have a quarterback who hopefully will be able to start for a whole season this year, which will help them drastically. They returned 73% of their team's production from last year. This defense ranked middle of the pack in the SEC last season, was the seventh best pass defense in the country. If the rush defense just catches up a little bit and the offensive line does its job, y'all, It's not far-fetched to see South Carolina winning eight-plus games this next season, and that is just a fact. Of course, we'll have to see what happens when all these games get played out, but that is my opinion on what could happen this coming season and why I think South Carolina could be the 2022 version of the 2021 Arkansas Razorbacks. So... Thank you to all of those of you who watched today's show. I hope that you all thoroughly enjoyed it. And again, if you want notifications, if you're watching this on YouTube, on any future episodes that come out, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Make sure to click the bell so that you'll be able to get alerts. I normally, again, have videos come out early in the morning, 7 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Monday through Friday. And of course... I will always have all the audio podcasts come out earlier than that in the morning on apps like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, and all the like, wherever you listen to your podcast daily. Thank you for those of you, again, who listen to today's podcast. Have a great rest of your Monday, and I will catch you all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks Podcast.